emergencies happen when you least expect them. Who can forget the mass shootings in Colorado and Wisconsin? Those incidents put the spotlight on the officers who have to respond to keep us all protected. Now on your side's Madeline Wright tagged along with law officers in Carteret County to find out what they do in an emergency to keep you safe. Three, two, one, go. This tug of war match looks like a game, but it's actually training for Moorhead City Police's tactical response unit. They're like a local SWAT team responsible for handling the most dangerous situations. Well, the tactical response unit is is a last resort for the Moorhead City Police Department. It's, it's when all of the means have been exhausted. Lieutenant Brian Dixon says the 12-member team prepares for the worst. Barricades, hostage situations, suicidal types, and even terrorism. We're training for situations that you hope never happen. And training starts right here in the parking lot. They run in their gas masks because if they're operational, if they're on a job or on a mission, there's a chance that they may have to wear it um, due to chemical agents that we might or might not deploy. After physical training, the group practices marksmanship. They even let me try. This is an M4, useful for active shooter situations. It can shoot up to 300 yards away. To pass the test, each person has to have nearly perfect accuracy. They shoot on top of a bus and then at close range. It's, it's above and beyond the initial police response. It's, it's above and beyond what these guys are already doing. On other days, the tactical team practices shooting over each other's shoulders, negotiating with suspects, and even scaling down buildings, developing skills they hope they won't need to use, but are more than ready to when necessary. In Moorhead City, Madeline Wright, nine on your side. Don't bother the horses. That's what the National Park Service would like to see happen after several people touched or tried to feed the wild horses at the Shackleford Banks. Nine on your side's Madeline Wright went to the Outer Banks to show us just how close some visitors are daring to get. The Shackleford Banks horses are among the most popular tourist attractions on the Crystal Coast. All 108 horses on the island were born in the wild, but lately more and more people have been disturbing these majestic creatures. Recently, law enforcement has given out at least three tickets. They're $225. These were people that purposefully try to get near to horses. Sue Stuska, a National Park Service biologist, says that's considered wildlife harassment. The three people find either touched or tried to feed the horses. You can get very badly injured. That's why this tourist says these three people were yelled at by their tour group leader. They were, they were getting pretty close and uh, taking pictures and stuff and kind of getting pictures with the horses. Watch as they follow the horses and the horses keep walking away. Later on, they took pictures while surrounding the horses. Another bad idea. The people, usually without meaning to, interrupt the horses' natural behaviors. The U.S. Park Service recommends people stay at least 50 feet away from the horses. That's about the length of a school bus. Some horses will actually approach people. My camera was rolling when a herd of them galloped near this group of visitors. That was really cool. I mean, I've never been that close. Stuska said they did the right thing by staying put. She hopes others will be just as cautious. On Shackleford Island, Madeline Wright, nine on your side. The Park Service has ordered 10 signs to be put up around the island coming up this week. You're watching Nine on Your Side at 5 o'clock. The North Carolina Seafood Festival kicked off today in Moorhead City. It's a tradition now in its 26th year, and it draws nearly 200,000 people to the Crystal Coast. We love that. Nine on Your Side's Madeline Wright is live near the Moorhead City waterfront now, where the crowd's been growing all day. Madeline. Jeff, there's so much to do and see here over the next three days. They have live country music, fireworks, carnival rides, and the highlight of it all, seafood of all types. Thousands of people across the east are in Moorhead City for the North Carolina Seafood Festival. They come for the rides, the prizes, and the unique arts and crafts. It is my favorite festival. It is my favorite time of the year, and I've been coming for 26 years. It's a big event for us and our friends. We don't really take a lot of vacations. This is our vacation. But hands down, the number one reason people come here? Food. <laughs> the food. Everything I've ever had was good. Really good funnel cake and um, shrimp burgers and scallop burgers. Crab cake especially. That's the key. The food's good, I'm here. <laughs> Festival goers say it's the best seafood in town. Bacon wrapped shrimp, shrimp and fries, crab sandwiches, and much more. It's out of this world. You can really taste the crab. 
about 225 vendors are on hand selling their goods, everything from beach jewelry and handbags to paintings and other crafts. We just love it. We'll walk from one end to the other. Our feet will be burning by Sunday afternoon. Festival organizers say the event brings at least $32 million in sales to Carteret County every year. Country music band Gloriana will perform live tomorrow at 5, and at 9, they'll have fireworks over the Bogue Sound. Jeff? All right, Madeline, that sounds like fun. We'll check back in with you here coming up shortly.